Hey everybody, uh, I keep on getting questions about the coronavirus, so let's talk about the coronavirus. I've been having lots of patients and students ask me, what do I do about the coronavirus epidemic that the media is currently blowing way out of proportion in the United States? They're scaring people with how contagious it is and how you can get it more than once, uh, as though that's something strange or different, uh, which simply is not the case. In fact, you could catch a cold many times a year also, since we don't build up a resistance to the common cold, by the way, which happens to be a coronavirus. Most people don't realize that. Common cold is also a coronavirus. So what am I telling people? Well, it's pretty simple. And I figured I'd put it up on my YouTube channel for everybody's benefit instead of just my patients and my students. But actually, I sort of consider those people that uh, watch my YouTube and look at my uh, stuff on my website, I consider you all to be my students also. You're learning from me, so you're my students. First of all, for at least the next few months while the virus is running its course, uh, just like the bird flu, H1N1, uh, the Zika virus, SARS, uh, as they all did in past years. Oh, they were horrible. Everybody was going to get uh, sick. You know, millions of people were going to die. Well, of course, it never happened. Uh, maybe in third world countries, um, maybe in countries where uh, people were um, not able to get good medical care, uh, where a larger number of people uh, were um, less educated, had uh, less access to uh, good medical uh, advice, or actually our medical advice isn't so good, let's say good medical care. Uh, or just where you have a lot of people that just aren't as healthy. Uh, in the United States, we never had thousands and thousands of people dying from any of these things. Last time that happened was a long, 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 long time ago. So, uh, you should work to keep your immune system working really well by avoiding foods which depress immune function. I have always referred to these as sabotage foods. Pretty good name, right? They're sabotaging your body's ability for really good health. And they include all sugars, all starch-based foods, like potatoes, cornbread, uh, regular bread, cookies, cakes, pasta, chips, uh, winter squash, sweet potatoes, yams, rice and other grains, beans. Uh, why don't you just Google what foods contain starch or what are the starch-containing foods. You can Google that. You should be able to find a list. It'll be mostly just the ones that I just mentioned. But you can find a good list online. Or you might just go to my website uh, in the resources drop-down menu on the upper right area and print out my healthy diet challenge. And then you could eat a David Getoff diet for the next few months. You might even find that you like some of the other benefits you feel. So, two of the most important immune vitamins are real vitamin A, not beta carotene, which doesn't contain, contain any vitamin A at all, uh, and vitamin C. I have most of my patients taking 10,000 international units of Carlson's Natural Vitamin A soft shells every day. Uh, Carlson's part number is uh, 1112, 1112. Sometimes it has a letter after that. That's their 10,000 Natural Vitamin A product. The FDA now also requires them to list retinol activity equivalents. So in addition to it saying 10,000 IU, it also says 3,000 RAE, for retinol activity equivalents. I wish they would have just left it the heck alone at international units, which we're all used to, but now the 10,000 international unit product from Carlson is required to also say 3,000 RAE, same product. Uh, if the person thinks that they were just exposed to something, I have them boost that from 10,000 a day to 50,000 a day. So that would be five of the 10,000 little tiny you know, soft gel pearls of vitamin A, just for about two weeks. Next is vitamin C. I said there are two really important immune vitamins. Next is vitamin C in uh, moderate to what some people would call high doses of about 2,000 milligrams three or four times a day for, again, the same two weeks if you think you were just exposed to something. Uh, if you're just taking it as a preventive, the A would be 10,000 a day, and the C would be maybe 1,000 three times a day instead of 2,000 three or four times a day. And I understand you're probably going to have to rewind this and listen to it again, take notes. That's okay. <laughs> that, that way you can have all this stuff listed as reference. Now, I don't really care which brand of vitamin C you're using. People say, well, what are your favorites? I've got like five favorites. Uh, one of my real favorites happens to be Ultimate Ascorbate, C1000 by Source Naturals, but you may not be able to find that one. So don't worry too much, just vitamin C. Uh, in sum, 
the vi vitamin C, when the dose gets high enough, sometimes produces a little bit of loose stool, which is well worth it to avoid getting sick. On a side note, I always, have, I always make certain uh, that my U.S. patients hold their levels of vitamin D3 between 55 and 80 nanograms per milliliter on blood tests. Now, that's not exact. If it's 82 or 84, I don't have them lower it. If it's 51 or 52, I don't have them raise it. But about 55 to 80 nanograms per milliliter, vitamin D, and that's the 25-OH, or hydroxy, 25-OH vitamin D3. Now, if you happen to be in a metric country, uh, and of course our closest metric countries here in uh, the U.S. would be uh, Mexico and Canada, then you have to convert those numbers because they don't use nanograms per milliliter on their vitamin D test. They use nanomoles per liter. That's totally different. You'll have to go and find a conversion website to see what that converts to. If my memory serves me, I think the metric equivalent is about 150 to 200. But we're in the U.S. here, 55 to 80 nanograms per milliliter for your vitamin D3 blood level because that also is very helpful but that's not something you can do instantly. You can take a whole bunch of A right now, you can take a whole bunch of C right now. It'll take months to slowly bring your vitamin D level up, but you should do that. Lastly, would be to pick a really good immune enhancing product from the, the ones I'm about to mention here and take at least one of them for the next few months, you know, or forever for that matter, because I, I, I take them all the time, but take at least one of these for the next few months. So let's go over a few. And again, you can stop this and write them down, go back, listen again. Immune Builder, that's the name of the product, Immune Builder. It's a mushroom capsule, and it's made by Mushroom Science. Uh, if you have a really good health practitioner, and they know that the best mushrooms are made by this company, they'll have a different label, because the health practitioner's brand is not Mushroom Science. Mushroom Science is the health food store brand. The same product, the same company, just a different label, is JHS Natural Products. So in my office, it says JHS Immune Builder. In the health food store, it's Mushroom Science. And no, there isn't another company that makes any mushroom product as good as the ones that are made properly by Mushroom Science JHS. So that's one. Uh, the dose is two twice a day as a preventive dose, six twice a day as a therapeutic dose if you already you know, have a, a condition, and they found that the mushrooms are best taken, not best taken, incorrect. They find that they're most active when they're taken away from food like on an empty stomach. Another great product is called Epicor. You can go to my website and type in the search box, E-P-I-C-O-R, and listen to the, uh, the audio file on the story of Epicor. Fascinating product. They're capsules. Those just get taken at one capsule per day. I take mine all year long. A lot of companies have Epicor, they buy it from the manufacturer, they put it in their own capsules. Uh, I recommend Healthy Origins brand, but they're not the only ones that are buying Epicor and putting it in a capsule. All right. Uh, next immune product, olive leaf extract. Most of the olive leaf extracts on the market are using Chinese olive leaves that have fallen off the tree and have no activity. So the one I like best is the Comvita brand, C-O-M-V-I-T-A and their super strength olive leaf extract in soft gels is called immune support. One per day, all year long, or just for a bunch of months if you're trying to just up your immune system right now. Premier Research Labs has a really good immune product, which has changed its name many, many times. It used to be called Infectostat. I guess the government didn't like that name. It's now called Immunoven, I-M-M-U-N-O-V-E-N, Immunoven, capsules from Premier Research Labs. And the dose on that is two capsules twice a day. Although, again, the therapeutic dose, if somebody's already sick, boosts up from two twice a day to either four three times a day or six twice a day. So I'm giving you both doses. But prevention is much more important. I would like to not get things rather than having to treat them afterwards. Echinacea is a very well-researched herb that is really, really good for helping kick your body into gear. But most of the products are not active. And most of the companies that have good ones, people don't take enough. So Echinacea, Echinacea Liquid Tincture, the two companies that I know are really good, are Herb Farm, and Farm is spelled P-H-A-R-M. That's a health food store brand. You can all find it. Liquid Tincture by Herb Farm. And the other really good Echinacea is made by Herbalist and Alchemist. The dose for a good liquid tincture of Echinacea 
if you already think you're coming down with something, is a measuring teaspoonful mixed in a glass of water and do that four times a day. If you're taking it as a preventive, then you could take half of that. You could take it either twice a day or take a half a measuring teaspoon four times a day. I am not recommending any other brands of echinacea tincture as I find them to be so inactive they may not work. Another great immune product, remember I'm just saying pick one of these and take it, you could take more than one, is Colostrum LD. The LD happens to stand for liposomal delivery, but the product is called Colostrum LD powder made by Sovereign Laboratories in Arizona. And the dose on that is two measuring teaspoons twice a day mixed in a little bit of water. On an empty stomach, it's much more active. Uh, there's a product you can get in almost every health food store. It's made by Source Naturals, and it's called Wellness Formula. Very good formula, been out for a long time. They even have the proper dosing on their labels. Very few companies do. That's why I'm giving you doses. Wellness Formula has the right dose on their labels by Source Naturals, so if you pick that up in the health food store, take it according to the label. And I might possibly add a fascinating product, a cer certain type of elderberry extract, called Sambucol, S-A-M-B-U-C-O-L. It's a certain brand of uh, elderberry extract, preferably the sugar-free stevia sweetened syrup uh, or the sugar-free lozenges. At their recommended dose, they finally put the right dose on the label, which for the liquid is two measuring teaspoons four times a day if you think you're getting either the coronavirus or any form of the flu. Sambucol works very, very differently. It is not an immune stimulant. Uh, it, and it doesn't kick your immune system in gear in any way. What it does is it takes up the receptor sites on healthy cells to help prevent the virus from coming out of other cells that it's duplicating in and getting in, into your healthy cells. So you could take that with any of them. If you or any friends of yours use essential oils, uh, you might have a good essential oil diffuser in your house. You could use a mixture of some of the oils that are very antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. Uh, one of the mixes that's been known for a long time is the mixture of essential oils called thieves, just like somebody that's a thief, thieves oil. That can be mixed into your uh, diffuser and used around the house as a, a sort of an anti-infective to prevent things from transferring from one person to another. I do not recommend using any form of chlorine bleaches or ammonias in your house to clean things because the fumes from these are toxic and will reduce your immune function and can damage your lungs. I hope this has been helpful and I hope none of you get sick and when you do, I hope like my patients, you get over it very quickly. Oops, I almost forgot. Um, I found a very nice, accurate, short video uh, by a medical doctor. Say hello, Tomka. It's my ninth generation raw meat girl. Uh, and I'm splicing that in right after this so you can watch what the MD has to say because I think he did a pretty good job. Almost forgot to say that. So we need to get the facts straight. How does this virus work? How does it transmit? Where does it want to go? And let's protect ourselves. I'm Dr. Peter Lin. I'm a family physician in Toronto, Canada. The coronavirus is a family of viruses that can cause as mild things as just a common cold all the way up to SARS or MERS. These are these bad pneumonias that we're talking about. And basically what these viruses are, they look like a tennis ball with all these spikes sticking out of it. And depending on the type of spike, it allows that virus to attach to certain places. So some viruses, they have the spike that attaches to your nose. So basically you just get a common cold. But the SARS virus and this new virus that we're talking about has the spike that allows it to attach to the cells in your lung. And when it attaches there, it puts in information to make photocopies of itself. So it uses our equipment to make more viruses. I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. Most of the coronaviruses live in animals. In this particular case, it was from Wuhan. There was a fish market where they were selling live animals. And the thought is, is that the virus was in a live animal, then it crossed into a human. But then what we found was that people were getting sick in terms of healthcare workers, in terms of family members that were looking after them, which now meant that the virus can pass from human to another human. Just like all viruses, it needs to reach a target, which is your lung. 
and it has to get there with your help. It has no feet and no wings. So therefore, it needs us to move it there. So that's why we keep saying, don't hang around sneezy people because you're going to breathe it in. And don't touch your face because that's how the virus is going to get in. The masks are helpful, but they're not necessary because they're leaky. The ones that you and I buy basically have pockets here. So therefore, the virus can get in. What the masks really do is they stop us from touching our face. If you're sick, we tend to mask you. So therefore, you're not spewing out the viruses to other people sitting around you. The true people that have the real masks are the N95. Those are sealed. These are for the doctors that may be caring uh, for their patients. So in the beginning, the coronavirus will cause kind of like flu-like symptoms or a cold. So people just get the stuffy nose, that kind of thing. But you'll understand that as soon as that virus starts manufacturing in your lung cells, they're producing all these copies of the virus, all of a sudden now you kill the lung cells. So now you can't exchange oxygen. And that's why one of the early symptoms is people get very short of breath and they tend to have a difficult time breathing and that's why they end up in hospital. So currently, unfortunately, we don't have a direct treatment for the coronavirus. So we don't have a medication that can kill it off. And so it's really supportive. So in other words, the patient can't breathe. We give them oxygen, help them to breathe. They can't drink. So therefore, we give them fluids to support them. Their kidneys begin to shut down. We help them with all those things. So it's a very supportive process. This is a new virus that we've never seen before. So our immune system, our army, are having a hard time figuring out what to do. So usually what we have to do is we make something called antibodies. So these are things that can grab onto the spikes that we see on the virus and it'll get rid of the virus for you and that will actually bring you back to good health. So therefore the elderly may have a worse outcome and of course the young children, so the babies, their immune system is not so good either so they may not make those antibodies as well. So just remember your hands may be with virus. Virus cannot hurt you because it can't get through the skin but the moment I do this now I've brought the virus right to where it wants to go. So let's remember not to touch our hands to our face. So let's say you think that you might have been on a plane or you might have bumped into somebody that has it. What should you do? So the first thing is to contact a healthcare worker to tell them that potentially you have it. If you're feeling symptoms and you're going to go into a facility, call ahead. Okay, so whether you're calling the paramedics or whether you're calling the hospital or your doctor, just mention that you were on a flight. If you don't have any symptoms, then what we do is a little bit of a self-quarantine. In other words, we can just keep you away from other people and so you don't go into parties, don't go with your friends, don't go into public transportation. So we can contain it very easily by making sure that you do a self-confinement, so to speak, uh, for the, let's say, 7 to 14 days is the longest incubation time. So after that, if you're feeling well, then you don't have anything to worry about. So if we get the facts right, then we don't have to be overly worried, but we do the right things so that we don't get the virus ourselves and that we don't pass it on to others. And if we look after each other in this way, this virus will have nowhere to go. It needs us to move it, it needs us to make copies for it, and if we don't help it, then the virus will stop. So we have the power to do that right now.